Hi, Deepesh. Good morning. How are you? Fine, sir. What about you? Okay, I'm good too. Thank you. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Yes, sir. So, my name is Deepesh. I belong to Rohtak, Haryana. I completed my graduation 2020 by MD University. Mm -hmm. And I know manual testing. And in manual testing, I'm familiar with the STLC, STLC, smoke testing, sanity testing, performance testing. And uh, nowadays, I'm looking for an organization where I can utilize my skills and learn something new from the seniors. Yes. Okay. So you are actually a uh, fresher and you are looking for yes, a job in software testing. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what do you mean by alpha testing? And what is the difference between alpha testing and beta testing? Uh, sir, alpha testing is done by the test, test engineer only. Here they ensure that all the requirements are built according to the customer or not. Mm -hmm. And in beta testing is done by the customer only at the customer location only. They, they also ensure that his requirement is complete or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is uh, the difference, main difference between alpha testing and beta testing? The main difference between mm -hmm. we do I we do this at the time of the production level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in a, any any other point that is coming to your mind? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a very important question, you know, that might be asked in an interview. So you can tell that alpha testing involves both white box testing as well as black box testing while beta testing is commonly about black box testing only right alpha testing is done at the developer site while beta testing is done or performed at the end user of the product and okay. alpha testing as you were mentioning it is performed by the testers who are usually uh, internal employees of the organization itself while beta testing is performed by the clients who are not a part of the organization now if alpha testing is being performed so over there security testing will not happen or reliability testing those kind of things are not checked in alpha testing but at the same time during beta yeah. testing reliability is done security testing is done how much the software is robust those things are tested at the during the beta testing okay okay yeah now what is component testing here we check the um, each component of the application mm -hmm. test each and every component of application is they are working or not right according so when, to the requirement okay so each and every so you mean validating the individual components rather than the whole applications okay so yes yeah, in an interview, please focus on these keywords validating. So a component testing is about unit testing. It is about more about focusing on validating the individual components rather than the whole application or the software you can tell. Okay, now what is end to end testing? Uh, in end to end testing, this is the same where we can testing all over the functionality of the application. Mm -hmm. Like in system testing, we do this end-to-end -end testing. Mm -hmm. Right. What is the purpose of doing this end-to-end -end testing? Why should a so why should a organization do end-to-end -end testing? Yeah, the customer can also do uh, any mm -hmm. check any functionality of the application at the production level. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so you what you can tell is the basic significance of doing end to end testing is to identify the system dependencies. And we are ensuring that the entire flow together as, as a software, it is working fine or not. Okay, so because generally what happens every team, you know, let's say if they are creating or developing some modules. During the story testing or during the unit testing, they will be looking at these points. Okay, my module is working fine. This particular thing is working fine. But what about the end-to-end -end flow? What if it is getting integrated with all the other modules? So those are the 
few of the key points and it is very important these things are generally a part of end to end testing only okay now what is monkey testing and monkey testing we test randomly mm -hmm. but we do not know about the requirement what about about the product we mm -hmm. don't know about them requirement or product right so generally it is more about uh, trying to make the uh, trying to you know uh, create crashes in the software irrespective yes. of the data you just enter data in any format and you verify if the software is crashing or not yes sir okay are you aware about these concepts like smart monkey and dumb monkey no sir okay so basically smart monkey is more uh, told about you know when you are testing from load testing stress testing point of view okay and it is a very uh, one of the good development cost would be high in case of this while in case of dumb monkey it is just for uh, basic testing right and helps in locating just quality bugs so that is the two differences between smart monkey and dumb monkey now what is the difference between baseline testing and benchmark testing so i don't know about this okay no issues see it's a mock interview uh, when you when you don't know the answer of the question i'll be giving the answer on your behalf but at least give it a try so maybe in a real time interview also even if you don't know the answer of the question tell the interviewer see i am not uh, aware about this question but i would like to give a try who knows maybe 40 to 50% your answer goes correct right and that might turn in your favor only rather than not giving any answer so try to give some answer baseline testing or and benchmark testing benchmark mm -hmm. okay no please okay okay dipesh no issues so baseline testing is more about you know it will uh, collect the performance of the application that is the baseline testing while benchmark is something that it will compare your software or your application performance with the industry standards so in benchmark so as we you know we mentioned okay he has set a high benchmark or his benchmarks are good are on a high level so what do you refer to so that means you are comparing from one thing to another thing you are referring to something right you might be doing apple to apple comparison and then you will you might be seeing okay this is what the benchmark is so it is basically comparing the uh, application performance okay so you can also tell it is about uh, collecting the information of the software and uh, you will be comparing with the other applications okay or you might be doing this this happens generally in case of computers let's say if the app is already there in the market and you are going to release that app so you will be comparing okay this feature is there in that app this fe this feature is not there in my app or if it is oh. working how it is working or how fast it is working yes. so those are the comparison parameters okay while baseline testing is more about you will uh, test the current performance and you will compare with the application's previous performance only of your application okay. let's say in november if the application is um, able to work with 100 users so in december you will be testing with more users and you will be comparing the time or you might be testing it with the same number of users and you might be seeing how much time it is taking what is the response time has it increased or has it decreased so that is baseline baseline testing okay now what is the role of qa in project development now uh, qa has to prevent the defect mm -hmm. uh, it is present in the whole cycle of the process <laughs> whole process okay apart from this uh like uh... no issues take your time so see the role of qa is not only to find the defect 
or to uh, prevent the defects. But QA, as a QA member, see from the scratch, from the beginning, they are involved in requirements grooming or requirements discussion. So if any business analyst is there, PO is there, they need to collaborate with them. They need to understand the requirements. Until unless they won't be clear with the requirements, they won't be able to test or certify the product. Okay, so that is the very first and the basic thing. Then they are involved in planning, testing and execution. Let's say if I am doing some planning, so the delivery manager along with the team, development team, testing team would be, you know, discussing, okay, let's keep like uh, 20th December as a release date. Would you be able to complete your testing activities by that time? and give us some kind of closure report or or would you be able or do you need more time or if you need more time so why you need more time what are the resources that you need what are the machines if any specific environment you are looking for so they are involved in planning testing and execution okay now uh, once the planning is done with the development team then they will be also involved in the internal planning let's say okay for this particular story, this member will be writing the test cases. For this particular story, you will be reviewing the test cases. Right? Those okay. other internal activities again. Then let's say if any new joinee is there, so he or she might be explaining or uh, giving or providing training about the testing to the, them as well. Okay. Then at the end, we are also involved in uh, tracing the test cases to the requirements via traceability okay. metrics to make sure that each and every test case has been covered. Each and every requirement okay. is being covered. Okay. So this is what the role of QA is in the project development. Then tomorrow, let's say if you have logged a defect, but time is not there. So you will be involved with one more kind of uh, meeting that is known as bug triaging. You will be coordinating with the team members and you will be deciding which all bugs needs to be fixed on a high priority and which bugs can be taken in the future releases. So those things are there. So when anyone asks you about the role of QA or role of a test train project development, try to explain all these things. The more, Perfect. yeah, the more information you will give, the more interviewer will get happy. Okay. Okay. Now, what do you, what, what do you mean by bottom up testing? Bottom up testing. And bottom up, uh, here, here, we previously added the molecule and we test the data flow between the modules. Mm -hmm. and also ensure that the added mod module is the parent of the previous module. For example, when we uh, uh, buy the product online, mm -hmm. now we cancel that product. Okay. Our payment will refund mm -hmm. and that number of uh, product will be same as previous. Right. But how is this example related to bottom-up testing? Right. Mm. Let's say if you have done the payment and you uh, you get the product. Okay. But let's say if size is not getting matched or there is some defect in that product. So you will be returning it back to the company and the money will be refunded. So I wanted to know how is this related to this bottom of testing? Uh, parent, the module, each module have its parent. Mm -hmm. Parent module? Well, the uh, did module have the parent of previous module? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mean to say that uh, mm, there is a defect in the software? Can you explain what kind of defect you are referring to? No, no, I need, I'm saying each mod, added module uh, hmm. have parent of previous module. Okay, parent of previous module. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, uh, let me tell you, bottom-up testing is all about, you know, carrying out an integration testing. It is a part of integration yes, testing. You That's will right. be first testing the lower level components, and then you will be approaching the top level components. 
Yes, sir. And you need to keep moving, keep testing until you reach to the top of the hierarchy. Okay. Yes, sir. That is bottom of testing. Okay, now what is severity and what is priority? Severity is the impact of defect through hmm. the business workflow. And the priority is the importance of defect. Mm -hmm. Is how much it affects the business at all. Okay. So the in high severity in high severity, so the the we want to payment our product. Mm -hmm. No payments. So there are different options by UPI, by credit card, by debit card, or by anything mm -hmm. else. No one is working. So we consider that a high severity. And oh. low, uh, about low priority, in low priority mm -hmm. like uh, this spelling mistake or the alignment of text or image is not at their place. Okay. Right. Does not affect the business workflow. Mm -hmm. So that will be high priority, right? So let's say if the logo or image is not visible into the application, will it be a high severity or low severity defect? It is high priority. Mm -hmm. High priority. And what about severity? Low severity. Low severity. Okay. And if anything is not working into the application, would it be a high severity or low severity? If it affects the business flow, we decide according to this mm -hmm. or not. Correct, correct. No, that's a very good answer. If it is affecting the business uh, use case, then definitely the severity would be high. But in case of high priority, if the logo or the image is not getting visible, yes, so that would be an example of high priority. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what is the difference between smoke testing and sanity testing? In small testing, we test the basic and critical feature of the application. Mm -hmm. Whereas in sanity testing, we check the stability of new functionality or the existing build. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one would be done first? Smoke testing or sanity testing? First, we will do smoke testing. Smoke testing, right. So okay. you will be verifying if the build is uh, good to go for testing or not. If let's yes, say. Sir, yes, sir. Some particular URL itself is not working, so you won't be able to proceed with the further test. Yes, that is smoke testing and sanity testing. What is the difference between regression testing and retesting? Uh, uh, firstly, hmm. suppose, suppose, uh, suppose uh, a test engine finds a bug, mm -hmm. and the test engine send a bug to the developer, and developer fixed it. If uh, and, and then the test engineer doing testing again of that build, so this is retesting. And in retesting, which we, uh, we test the check the all the area impacted due to some changes or uh, any change in any functionality. Mm -hmm. So this is called regression testing. Okay, great. Okay, what is the difference between SDLC and STLC? Uh, SDLC stands for Software Development Life Process. It mm. is a process in which uh, we develop the software, whereas in STLC stands for Software Test Lifecycle. Here we test the it's a process in which we test the software. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So thank you so much, Deepesh, for joining us for the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so how can I improve more? Right, right. Okay, and I'll give you the feedback. Yes, sir.